Vinsforce has recently acquired a BMW uh, E34 535i to be used as an R&D or dyno car. And uh, the reason we did that is we want to start putting hard numbers to improvements people make so that they know what they can expect for their dollar. Um, it's real hard to base financial decisions on subjective information. We acquired the 617. This will be our first engine to go in the dyno car. And we're going to do a baseline run. We're going to find out uh, where the engine is at today. So this engine was found in the Arizona desert, uh, laying in a mud hole. And um, for $500, we pretty much have what you see here. Of course, I did come in and put new filters on it, new fuel lines, and uh, cleaned it up quite a bit. But um, you know, we'll do a compression test, and we'll give kind of a state of the union on the engine so that people know the health, good or bad. Uh, it's a real world example of the 617 somebody would pull out of a wrecking yard. And then we'll upgrade the pump. We'll do a dyno run with that so that you can compare what does a pump upgrade get me for my money. Uh, after, we'll put, go ahead and put an HX30 on it and we'll do multiple dyno runs at different boost level. And that way, people will know how much of an increase in power uh, a whole set HX30 will get them and what boost levels. Now, the thing with this car is I'm not afraid to blow up this engine. So just because I run this at 30 or 35 PSI doesn't mean you should. But we'll be able to tell you the percentage horsepower gain you can expect. And again, we'll document everything on the website, um, compression tests, really every flaw that we know of in the engine, as well as the car, right? So this is sitting in front of a Jeep AX15, and that can be important when you want to consider drivetrain loss. I don't know what everybody else is going to run for a transmission, but at least you will know what the dyno car has in it. Uh, also, I will be changing out my 427 open differential to a 323 limited slip. Uh, we do have other engines lined up, uh, OM606 and M104, and who knows what's after that. And we're going to get into some different transmissions. So I kind of want something that um, isn't going to push the 606 into a um, outrageous RPM range, and I think the 323 is just about perfect uh, with the transmission I hope to run in that build. So in this video, uh, the real point of interest for me is this Mercedes diesel 4x4 adapter plate. So I hope to address some issues with that. It's been a long time since I've driven a manual transmission, and even longer since uh, I've worked on one. So I'm very rusty, I was very timid going into this, and hopefully uh, this video will put some people at, uh, at ease that are contemplating doing this kind of upgrade. So let's go ahead and take a little closer look at what was done. So to get the Mercedes diesel 4x4 adapter kit installed to mate the AX15 transmission to the Mercedes OM617 engine, the first step in the adapter kit's instructions is to go ahead and mark the flex plate. So here you can see I, I went ahead and I marked the flex plate location. Now that's important because the engine is externally balanced. So ideally you get your new flywheel and you can take that to a, a shop that has the right equipment and they can balance it to the old flex plate. Here in the Austin area, after countless hours of actually calling all the different shops, there's no shop that I could identify that I did not call. Um, there was one shop that people referred me to in Kyle, Texas, and unfortunately their equipment was out of commission. So I could not get this done. So the, the Luke flywheel and pressure plate are uh, already balanced when you get them. The problem with that is it's not balanced to, do, to this engine. So that's just a risk I'm going to move forward with. And uh, maybe it won't be an issue, but at this point I didn't have any other option except to send it out somewhere. And that would actually exceed the cost of the transmission itself. So ideally you want to mark the flex plate and have your new flywheel balanced to that flex plate. So with the flex plate off, you need to take off this mid plate. Now the mid plate sits between the engine and whatever transmission you're running in your Mercedes. And the, uh, the adapter plate will take its place on the engine. Now the next step is uh, to go ahead and modify 
the oil pan. Okay, so here we can see the modifications I did to the pan. Really it consists of marking along the edge here of the adapter plate and then I took a sawzall with a long blade and I needed to be careful that you don't dig into the pan but you come out straight and and cut your arc according to this uh, metal metal plate that is provided in the kit. Now you need to do that for clearance for the starter. Unfortunately the starter that I had um, and I had purchased that when I bought the AX15 was for a different model. So the solenoid actually reached in here and I ground away a little bit more than I needed to but it doesn't present a problem at all. Now with the oil pan ground down and the adapter plate firmly mounted to the engine, it's time to go ahead and start working on the clutch assembly. Now the first step is to mount the flywheel to the hub that comes with the adapter kit so that you can drill th new holes through the flywheel that will allow it to mate up to the 617. I strongly recommend you use a drill press for this. Now when I purchased my AX15, I actually didn't get any bolts. I just got the bare transmission. So this was a stopping point for me. I had to order a flywheel and pressure plate bolts. So I elected to go with ARP. So the ARP bolts were a little bit longer, I'm guessing, than the stock bolts. So I had to use washers that were a little bit thicker than those that came in the adapter. So once the flywheel that has been drilled was firmly mated with the hub assembly, we could go ahead and bolt it up to the OM617 crank. Now the hub already has a center bearing, if you will, or really it's a bronze um, pilot bushing, if you will. Uh, that's already installed. So you can go ahead now and install the pressure plate. Again, I used ARP bolts for this. I used a Luke flywheel and a Luke pressure plate. And uh, the pressure plate actually came in the heavy duty Luke clutch kit. So it had the disc, the throw out bearing, as well as the pressure plate in it. Now the instruction says to drill out holes in the top of the transmission here. I had no reason to do that. I, I had no clearance issues. Everything bolted up uh, perfect. I went ahead and I got a different uh, starter that was meant for this engine, or excuse me, this transmission. It bolted in with no issues whatsoever. So with the Mercedes diesel 4x4 clutch kit com completely installed, this engine and transmission is just about ready to go in the car. As always, I appreciate you watching and look forward to your feedback. Thank you.